Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. It is I, Nadia the Nerdy, and today I am super excited because I am talking about Adventure Time yet again. And let's be honest, how could I not with all the new Fiona and Cake stuff that's coming out right now? There's no possible way that I could not just want to make Adventure Time content endlessly now. Because I am into this stuff! And of course, I had to wear this incredible, most random mashup of a sweater that I've ever found in my life. The Princess Mononoke Adventure Time crossover. How could I not? How could I not buy that? You know? <laughs> Please take my money. So anyway, I am talking about Adventure Time yet again. If you didn't know, I did do a reaction video to wow. the first episode. In that video, I did notice some of the little Easter eggs that were sprinkled around, but I had to go back and watch it again because there was just so much. So today, I'm going to be getting into all of the things that you might have missed while watching the first episode and the second episode as well, because actually, the creators are so incredible and they really went all out. You can tell who this show is for. It is for the fans who really love Adventure Time because those are the people who are going to notice these things and they put so much thought into this show and I can really feel it. So I'm super excited. <sighs> And definitely let me know if there's stuff that I missed because honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. Like I said, yeah. these creators have really gone above and beyond and I pretty much guarantee that there are fans out there who have picked up on things that even I didn't notice even though I've watched Adventure Time on repeat for like three years at this point, like just on a constant loop. Stop it. Get some help. So yeah, let's get into it. There will be spoilers in this video if you haven't watched all of the episodes that are out, not just one and two. Like, I may spoil other episodes because I'm just kind of like weaving it all together. I'm going to talk about the things in order as they appear throughout the episode. So, to start off, Bimo is her alarm clock. Fucking love that. That was so clever. Gotta have Bimo somewhere in there, right? Like, there's no, he's so, he, she, they, is so pivotal, pivotal. Huh? You, you could, you'll do, you, you want. So important. <laughs> So major of a character. We need Bimo always. Then after she leaves her apartment, we see Ash and Wildberry Princess. So I noticed Ash right off the bat and I was like, oh my god, there's the fuck boy. But right next to him is Wildberry Princess. And it's kind of not as obvious, but that is definitely Wildberry Princess. So then we get to the bus scene where she's at her job. And that so delightful because there's so many little characters just sprinkled all through the bus. Every one of those characters is someone that we already know. So we have, of course, Marsha Lee, we all know. Then we have Fern. I can't believe while I was watching the episode that I didn't pick up on the fact that that was Fern, but that's Fern sitting right in front of Fern. We have one of the banana guards, or in this universe, I like to call them the banana guys. <laughs> and he's sitting with hot dog prince or princess. I dream a lot about being a hot dog. I dream about being a banana. Mine's too messed up to even talk about. We have Starchy in the back. Starchy still has a mustache. I live in the graveyard. Oh, it's next to the graveyard. There's Abraka Danielle up near the front. And of course, Queenie is there. And Queenie is the King of Ooh counterpart. Then the only mystery is who is the bus driver? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Who do you think the bus driver is? Right now, I'm leaning towards Toronto only because the king of Wu is hanging out with Toronto all the time. Like, that's his co-conspirator. So I can't really think of who else would just be, like, hanging out with Queenie and driving her bus and being, like, a part of her business other than Toronto. But again, I don't really know because this doesn't really look like Toronto. Maybe. Maybe the hair? I, I don't know. But let me know what you think. What are your theories? I've heard a couple different ones, like, maybe that's the cupcake guy or someone was like, oh, it's Carol. Carol the Cloud. <laughs> 
Yep, yeah, I know you. You're one of those swimmers, right? A little swim nut. What? No, I'm Finn. It's definitely not Carol, but I appreciate that theory anyway. <laughs> so while she's on the bus, she's talking about the park that they're passing by. It underwent a renovation 12 years ago. Who's the statue of? And the statue, I think, is Betty. And it's like Simon's subconscious like leaking into Fiona's world. Outside of the aquarium are little statues of Gunther. I mean, they're just penguins, but we all know they're really Gunther. All right. We need to appreciate the Guntherness of these statues. <laughs> Also, as Fiona is walking down the sidewalk, in one of the storefronts, there is one of Fiona's swords on a poster. So one of the swords that Fiona fights with in Adventure Time is on that poster. Mathematical! So then she passes by a building that has posters of the party bears on them. And we know those guys, obviously, from the episode they're partying in a monster's belly. Love that episode. Classic adventure adventure time but those bears are on the poster of that what I assume to be is a nightclub because <laughs> the party bears be partying bro excuse me excuse me I don't know why you don't know this but y'all are partying in a monster's stomach thanks I love dancing no y'all are partying in a monster's stomach I think he wants to know where the bathroom is As Fiona is walking down the sidewalk with Kate, she passes by Lemon Hope, but the banana guards. And here's the thing that really gets me, and this kind of bleeds into the second episode, but basically in the second episode, it's shown that those characters that she passes by on the street, Simon also passes by in Ooh, their other versions. And I thought that was, ap like that literally blew my mind. <sighs> Simon sees the banana guards. She runs into the banana guards and they even are saying the same thing. He's like, you know Jerry from HR? Got this. You know Jerry from HR? Oh, Got this. You know Jerry from HR? So good. Because it in both universes, both the banana guys say that. Then you have those little flies on skates for some reason, like that zoom in front of Simon. You also meet them and they ask Fiona to join their roller skating team or something. So that's like incredible because before it's like explicitly said that Fiona's universe is stored in his head. That's kind of giving us that clue. What is that, foreshadowing or something? But I just loved that detail. So next up, Cinnamon Bun is the old lady who buys all of that coffee. Obviously, we know that Gary is PB, and then Butterscotch Butler is the owner of the bakery, which is pretty interesting. Then we meet Hunter, and Hunter is obviously Huntress Wizard, and Ellis, we can gather, obviously, is Ellis P. After that, we see both of the lemon grabs, and the woman selling ice cream is the ice queen and again i'm so sure that there are more little cameos so to speak that i probably didn't even pick up on so if i missed one please let me know in the comments because i definitely want to know the other thing is that marshall lee has a bat sticker on his guitar so it's kind of a callback to his vampire-ness also marshall has a birthmark on his neck that mimics the bite mark that he would would have if he were a vampire. Also, when Fiona says to Marshall, can you let your mom know that my rent is going to be late? Marshall says, oh, I'm not really talking to her right now. We're talking about Hunson Abadir right now. I love Hunson Abadir. Honestly, he's one of my favorite characters. Yo, man. What? Don't eat those. <laughs> Boss! 
sign. We're talking about the gender bent version of Hudson Abadir. And I love that little detail. It's like so randomly put in there. It's not really like super touched upon, but it's kind of one of those things that you really only pick up on if you like really know Adventure Time. Which again, it's like you can see who the creators are making this show for. And they did it so brilliantly too because even casual fans or new fans could get into it and still totally enjoy it but like OG fans are gonna be like oh my god oh my god this is so good <laughs> I fucking love it bro like that's how I am right now but moving on to episode two so you know how in the first episode Fiona turns on the TV and it's cheers and she can't change the channel and it's just cheers no matter what in the second episode when Simon wakes up and he turns on the TV it is also cheers and he just has cheers on and it's again showing how much Simon's like reality influences Fiona and Cake's universe which is stored inside of his head which I guess we don't really learn until the end of that episode and the other thing that blew my mind which I just realized because as usual I was re-watching Adventure Time and I got randomly just by coincidence to the episode Simon and Marcy and Simon pretends to be on an episode of Cheers to cheer Marcy up and he sings the theme song to her do, 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 do. Making your way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. What is this? Film before a live studio audience. <laughs> Norm. Mute. Oh my god! Like, I literally had to pause it and be, like, frantically typing a note to myself. I'm like, oh my god, like, this is some incredible weaving of the universe, fuck yeah! <laughs> I just love that they took that little piece and like made it so much more significant in this show and it just shows again how well thought out this is. I'm like continuously impressed. I've been so impressed every single episode. The last few episodes I've literally been there like Oh my god, my mind is being blown. This shit is crazy. So yeah, anyway, that was really cool. Then, later on, we see that TV is Finn's interim partner after Jake passes. Yeah, Jake loved him. Yeah, he's the one who convinced us they were good. Honestly, I like them better than Finn and Dad. And obviously, that doesn't last very long. Like, TV is an adventurer in his mind, you know? Like, he loves a good fantasy, but is he going to actually go fight monsters with Finn? Mm, probably not. <laughs> Come on, TV. It's questing time. Okay, coming. So it kind of makes sense. After Jake passes, Finn is trying to find someone to adventure with him and TV is like, oh yeah, I'll go. And then he never probably goes with him like in reality. And then eventually Finn ends up, this is just my guess, but Finn probably after that ends up hanging out with Bronwyn and like taking her on adventures. And that's when we see him with Simon and Bronwyn in the Distant Lands episode with PB and Marcy where that takes place in the future and then Finn shows up and he's got that tattoo of Jake and it looks like he's a little bit older than he is in this like part of the series but I just think that's so fucking cool they're weaving together this story through all of these different series and just really world building like fucking Mad Men over there it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
So anyway, when Finn takes Simon into the woods and he's wearing that blindfold, that is definitely a callback to the episode Egress where Finn has to wear that blindfold and every time he opens his eyes, he ends up back in the dungeon. So he has to wear the blindfold and go full wild for however long until he ends up back in the cave and is able to actually leave the cave for real. That episode is amazing. Maybe Maybe I'll do a breakdown on that in the future, but basically that is definitely a callback to that episode because Finn is spouting some pure wisdom throughout that episode and he is trusting his intuition to walk through the woods blindfolded just like in that episode. Oh, oh, what the? Why didn't you tell me about the tree? What tree? Then, later on, we see that Finn is still carrying around his iconic green backpack. The other thing isn't really like an Easter egg or anything, but I thought was really interesting and a definite shift in the overall vibe of the show. And you can you can see the show maturing from this little detail. And it is that when Finn is fighting the monsters, you actually see blood and he actually is killing the monsters. And you don't don't really see that as much in the OG Adventure Time because it was on Cartoon Network and it was technically considered a kids show, but now we are in HBO territory. they're all quite a bit older. Fiona's older, Finn is older, so you can kind of feel that maturity within the show and the content of the show, especially when it deals with Jake's passing and dealing with loss and all of that. Like the maturity level is different than it was in the past. And then, as I said before, with Fiona seeing the same characters that Ice King or Ice King that Simon sees as he's walking and she's walking. The first two episodes actually happen simultaneously. It's just that one of them is happening in Ooh and the other is happening in the universe within Simon's head <laughs> or melon. <laughs> as they like to say in Adventure Time. Then the other thing that you might not have noticed is the Enchiridion is actually on Simon's Glob Shrine. <laughs> what a sentence to come out of your mouth. <laughs> the Enchiridion is on Simon's Glob Shrine. <laughs> It is, in fact, there. The other thing that I think is pretty obvious, but if you didn't realize it, Simon is basically using Choose Goose as a magical battery to create that portal that Fiona and Cake end up coming through. But that is Choose Goose in that cage. It kind of bothers me <laughs> a little bit. I'm like, wow, Simon, like... <sighs> You're not handling this well. You are literally torturing Choose Goose. Like, what did Choose Goose ever do to you, bro? Like, and why Choose Goose, though? Like, <laughs> really? It's crazy. So I did not realize while I was filming this video that there actually is a hidden scene at the end of Wizard City, the Distant Lands episode. We actually see Choose Goose basically turning evil. He finds what is left of Bufo. We know Bufo from the episode Wizards in the first season. And then we obviously see him again in Distant Lands. And Choose Goose gets what's left of him and then it cuts off and we can only assume that he somehow got Bufo's magic because otherwise why else would Simon be using Choose Goose specifically as a magical battery because obviously we know our good old pal OG Choose Goose was not very magical but Choose Goose turning dark and somehow gaining Bufo's magic magical battery potential. <laughs> that explains why choose goose, I think.
So yeah, those are all of the things that you might have missed in the first two episodes of the Fiona and Cake Adventure Time spinoff. And again, please let me know if there is anything that I missed, anything at all. What theories do you have about Adventure Time? I, I really want to hear all of your Adventure Time ideas in the comments because as you can see, if this is a purchase that I would make, I want, I just, adventure time is life like I don't I don't know like <laughs> but yeah I mean I have been thoroughly impressed as you can probably tell by this season so far I am incredibly excited to see where it goes and it's some really deep stuff I love all of the multiverses that are going on the multiverses had been mentioned before but we never really got to explore them except for farm world which like I think we can all agree is a little bit Bit, like boring in comparison to Ooh or Fiona's world or anything like that but now we're getting to see some of the other really wild universes and I can't wait to break down those episodes as well but again let me know the things that I missed and comment your thoughts about the show comment what adventure time topics you would like to see me cover in the future if you made it this far if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you can see more content from me in the future likely talking about adventure time but also other nerdy things as well and i will see you next time bye